bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Today you're on with Bishop Robert Johnson in the state of California. And then we're excited to go live and to broadcast again from Facebook Live and then to bring you information that will help support your walk in Christ. God bless you, God bless you. Please when you come in, like and share this broadcast and if you just happen to watch the video later please like and share the video god bless you god bless you god bless you okay we're gonna go into a text that god gave us because a lot of people are asking me today what do i mean by the prophetic voice of god and individuals often hear me say that I um, talk about the love letters that are in God's word. So what I want to do today, I want to use a text that's very, a text that's very profound that you don't hear a lot of individuals preach on or preach about. And man, it will bring clarity to to who and what God is doing in your life. There are a lot of people today, and am I against prophets? No, not at all. I don't speak against prophets. I'm not against prophets. I believe in the word of God 100%. I don't believe in individuals, but I believe in the word of God. Even myself, I don't declare or make myself larger than God's word. And, and I think that's one of the issues today that, uh, please forgive me, that holds up. Or it either distorts the understanding of a lot of people. Because what happens is when you talk about the office of a prophet or an apostle, we hear individuals making light of themselves more than light of the word. So today I want to share some insight um, from some, some, some things that God has given me. And if I'm wrong at any time, not to challenge, but I, I, I beg you to please bring me into understanding of where I might be wrong in regards to God's word. Um, first of all, we need to understand the word prophet and how it is different from the Old Testament to the New Testament. When you hear the word prophetic, uh, it simply states that God, in his infinite wisdom, splendor, power, and glory, saw the end before he took out the pen and began to, to write. So then what we call, what I call, I coined it, is the prophetic love letter of the Old Testament. In other words, everything that God had or that he was in his mind, he wrote it down. Um, then what happened as he wrote it down, as we come into the new covenant, we're looking for it to be revealed. That's why the Bible says that um, God's word has been hidden from the wise and the prudent and now been revealed unto babes. In other words, your your degree or your doctorate or your master's or your bachelor's cannot give you the principal understanding of the prophetic voice of God and bring you into light without Second Corinthians 3, 6 to where the Bible declares it is the letter that kill it, but it's the spirit that make it alive. And then if you go to John 5, 39, Jesus says they study the scripture or you read the scripture. He said, but these are those that testify of me. Then he confirms that in Revelations 1 and 8 when he says, I am Alpha Omega, the beginning and the end. So to understand God, you must understand that his purpose, Jesus, is all throughout the Bible. From Genesis to Revelations, there is woman, one one common understanding that's redemption through the blood of Jesus. So what I'm going to give you today is information for you to understand that when the Holy Spirit came, the Holy Spirit also works, watch this, in the office of the prophetic. If it lives in the believer, that's what the Bible said in John 14 and 2, 6, if I go not away, 
the Comforter cannot come who the Father is going to send in my name. So then the Comforter becomes your advisor. The Comforter becomes not just your advisor, it becomes your leader and your guide. It will give you information in regards to God's will for your life. That's why the Bible says he will teach, not it, but the Holy Spirit will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. The next thing is, there is nothing new under the sun. So what God wrote in his prophetic letter has to be confirmed. And I'm going to show you some things today, and I hope it really makes sense to you, and it truly helps you. Amen. So follow me here to our text today. Today we're going to use Isaiah 34 and 16, and I thank God for all those who are tuning in, um, and I pray that God bless blesses you today as we study um, I can see your questions if you put them in the room. I can see them and respond to them. Um, God bless you, those who are tuned in. So, so let's let's deal with the first one. If we deal with the first one, it's Isaiah thirty-four and sixteen. For anyone who does not know anything about the book of Isaiah, let me give you some information. The book of Isaiah is one of the largest books in the Bible. It is made up of sixty-six chapters within the volume of 66 books within the Bible. The book of Isaiah, if you know anything about the Mosaic law and how those Israelites that were birthed from that, the Hebrew nation, um, under Judaism and the Torah, or uh, uh, what we call the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible, when you look at those individuals who were scholars and who studied, they left out the, the, the book of Isaiah because it talks more about the, the messianic promises of a Messiah who would come. But yet, according to Judaism, it does not look like the God that they would know or the Messiah. So then that particular book is left out. So when you see Jesus in the temple at 12 years old and they are astonished because he's reading this book, it's because that's one of the books that they did not regard because Isaiah talks more about Jesus than any other book in the Bible. Yet John deals with his divinity or him being God, the God man, the duality of him being the God man and his deity. Yet Matthew deals with his genealogy and Mark deals with the miracles that he did. And then Luke confirms the not being an eyewitness, but the information he received secondhand. But when we deal with Isaiah, Isaiah gives us the prophetic peek or look into God's plan of redemption. So then anywhere, if, God, if Jesus said to those religious leaders in John 5, 39, you read the scripture. For in them, you think you have eternal life. But these are those that testify of me. So then if we have prophetic voice or prophetic word, then it must suggest or be about God. Anything outside of that is uncharacteristic of the plan of redemption in regards to the man Jesus. Uh, not that I question the prophet, but if you don't tell me what God is doing and operating as far as his divine pleasure or his divine plan of redeeming to man, at times I must question the motive. So let's go here in the text. God bless you, Sister Gray. In the text, it says, Isaiah 34, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Before we continue, I want to examine the text within three points. So the first point, the first point we look at, God here simply tells us to seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. But we need to define or find out what is special about seeking out of this book of the Lord and read. Then why does he call it a book? Because if you read Hebrews the 10th chapter and the seventh verse, it declares, Jesus states that, uh, here I am. He said, I come in the volume of the book to do thy will, and it is written in me, O God. In other words, when you look at the manifestation of God's word, the Bible, the book, it, it is written about the life of Jesus. And the reason, the reason it is written about the life of Jesus is because Jesus became the ultimate sacrifice for sin for the world. So then now Isaiah here tells us to seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read it. In other words, if you want to know Jesus and if you want to 
be the expression of his prophetic word, you have to read his word. Uh, you can't just look up in the air and give me a word and tell me what God says uh, because it's written in his Bible. That's why John 14 to 6 said, I will bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever you have read. So now God tells us here to seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Why does God want us to read his word? Because the things concerning God and the things concerning his revelation knowledge are written in the book. Uh, you can't create something that's not already been created before the foundation of the world. Again, I'm not against those who walk in the office. I'm just giving you information so you can know that when the Spirit of God came, he leads and guides you. So then if you are a born again believer, and if you are one who are in Jesus Christ, then you yourself have the power and the authority of God to call those things that are not as though they were. Oh, let me slow down. So say, watch this. Watch what God says here. This is why it's critical, child of God, to give his word. This is why it's critical not to go outside of the scope of God's word. Because if you do, it might create failure. Listen what God says. He says, no one of these shall fail. What, what won't fail? What's written in the book? Everything that's written in the book has power and it has life because it is the word of God. So God says, the constitution of my understanding given to you is that my word won't fail. That's why you can't afford for anyone to tell you anything that's outside the scope of his world, of his word that, that deals with your life. Mm, my destiny has been shaped in his word. Uh, for example, he tells Jeremiah, say not that the hour or you are a child. Jeremiah, before you came into the world, what I had already did, I had already fulfilled and sealed your destiny. That's why I'm able to tell you, Jeremiah, because it's written in my word. I called you to be a prophet to the nation. Not only did I call you, I ordained you. Why? Because it was in my plan. It was in my purpose to redeem men back to God. So what am I saying, child of God? What you need to understand, God has revealed his will for you and I before you and I were born. Oh, so then when someone gives me a word. It is only because God is allowing me to see what he stated in my life, whereby it is confirmation of the things that God wants to do in my life. So let's look at something. It said, none shall fail. Now watch this. The Bible just says here that God's word won't fail. I need, I need to give you examples. The prophetic voice of God is the most prof profound love letter that suggests intimacy that I've ever seen. Yet we are not in the place or in the position to where he speaks until later. If you read Isaiah, that same man, 35, it talks about Jesus healing the blind, giving sight to the blind, opening the ears of the dumb, and we see the lame walking, Isaiah 35, 1 through 10. But yet the man Jesus was not born yet. But in Isaiah 9 and 6, it already speaks as though he is here. For unto us a child is born and a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. But watch this again. In Isaiah 35, it says that the eyes of the, uh, the, eyes of the blind will be open. Consider the text, will be open. And the death of the dumb shall, prophetically, the words will, shall denote it will happen. We just are to speak and live the confirmation. The eyes and the ears of shall be open, and the lame shall walk. Not only shall he walk, but he's going to leap. He's going to jump. This is why we find when John the Baptist is in jail and doubt begins to set in. It just amazes me how many believers feel that Christians can't doubt or go through anxiety or go through anxiety. Anything. Well, Jesus went through anxiety in the Garden of Gethsemane when he did not want to drink from the bitter cup. The Bible declares that he prayed until sweat fell like drops of blood. Am I talking to anybody? Child of God gets me. Anytime, get with me real quick. Anytime there's a place or position to where God has called you and not you yourself, there will be opposition. There will be things that come against you, but you got to know if God be for you, who can be against you? Listen 
at me quick in the text as we run through here. The Bible says that John the Baptist uh, was kind of concerned and he sent his disciples to ask Jesus, are you the one or should we look for another? And man, I've been out here preaching. I've been out here doing what you told me to do, but I, I'm about to lose my head. I'm going through some things now. I sold out, but I need to know, are you the one or should we look for another? Well, now, wait a minute, child of God. Let's deal with the prophetic voice of God and its confirmation and how things work in the Bible. Uh, the Bible says that Jesus sent word back to them same disciples. And listen what Jesus said. Go tell John. He said, go tell John that the blind have received their sight. Mm. Go tell John that the deaf or the dumb are hearing. Go tell John that the lame are walking. What Jesus is saying, what was written in God's prophetic love letter, what happened is happening because I'm here. I'm here to confirm everything that God said. I'm here to bring into fruition what God spoke. Huh? I'm here to make it become reality what was already written in the word of God. That's why God's word said it can't fail and it won't fail. But if it's your word, Word, child of God, it might fail. If it's your opinion, it might fail. If it's your property, it might not come to fruition. But the Bible says that the word of God cannot go out and return void. There are too many people speaking things that are not written or found in the word of God. Yet they are saying it is prophetic. Well, if the voice of God did not write the letter, baby, it is a forgery. It's not fake and it's not real, but it is fake. That's why you and I need the word of God for we are built upon the word of God for the Bible declares that the word is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among those who are sanctified to, that means to be hollowed out or set apart let me go back to the text I'm pumped up I'm excited go back here with me right quick it's a none shall want her mate this is critical here that you get this part None shall want her mate. The old covenant or the old testament is the foreshadow or the voice of God in regards to the things that will happen in the new. So the old testament is the prophetic voice of God speaking into reality the things that you and I must understand and for God's will to be complete in our life. I'll give you another example. Let's go back to Isaiah 9 and 6. Isaiah writes under the unction of the Holy Ghost once he's clean and God begins to use him. Isaiah says for unto us a child that is a prophetic statement and yet it already sounds though it has already happened because when it comes to the things of God, the things of God are for sure. We can stand on God's word. Please forgive me. And what, we, what Isaiah is doing, he's telling us what's going to happen. So then we must look for the confirmation. In Matthew 1 and 21, the angel of the Lord, which is God himself, because no one can never announce or pronounce God but himself, comes to Mary and says, you shall bring forth a son and they shall, a child and they shall they will call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sin there is the confirmation to what God spoke in Isaiah 9 and 6 so the prophetic understanding suggests that everything that God spoke under the old covenant has to be revealed and it is only revealed through the word of God to those God have given information and foreknowledge concerning his will so the Bible says when this happens then Jesus Christ receives glory. Well, what are you saying? The Bible talks about in the old covenant that the Messiah would be baptized of John the Baptist. So when Jesus is baptized by John the Baptist in the Jordan, the Bible says that the heaven opened. Watch this. Uh, and there was a voice heard from heaven. And, and then the Bible just says, declared that the angel of the Lord descended on him like a dove. Then the Bible said there was a voice heard from heaven. This is my beloved son and who I am well pleased. In other words, you heard God's voice because what was written in the prophetic covenant in the prophetic love letter of the Old Testament has now been revealed in the life of Jesus, which gave God glory. So woman or man of God, if you are a prophet and you speak the word of God and you give divine instruction based on what was already written in God's word, it gives God's glory. But if you give your manifestation, your interpretation, your understanding, where is the glory of God given to you're actually taking from God? Oh, I feel like preaching. Hi, Yabosha.
So then it says this. Here's another critical part. Part three. Part one. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. That's one. Part two. It says, nothing from God's word shall fail. Then none shall lack her mate. And what that means, there is a running mate. If you find a prophetic voice in the old covenant, then you have to find its confirmation in the new covenant. Now watch this though. Here is the pivotal point that you must catch. Part Point three. For my mouth, here we go again. Watch this. Whose mouth? If the, prof, if the prophet is not speaking through the voice of the mouth of God, who's, who are they speaking for? Who are they speaking through? I, I ask them all the time, please come on and talk to me. There's some things I need to hear. I'm talking about lying prophets. I'm not talking about those called by God in Ephesians. And I, I wish I had time to deal with that today. I can't. Church and leaders and teachers, please teach from the first person understanding and the second person understanding. Things that did happen in pa Apostle Paul's life, uh, when you teach it in the first person, you're putting people in bondage because I didn't live in Corinth. I didn't live in a seaport city where prostitution had crept into the church. So he tells women to be quiet because those individuals had come in and led silly women away uh, who were in lust. So please teach the text correctly. Am I getting on people and rebuking people? Not at all. But you put people in bondage when you don't teach the text right. The first person understanding never comes to us. It is suggested to the audience. That's why a proper exegesis done correctly means much. But then how can it apply to me? Understanding that the scriptures that were written for time were written for our learning. But tell me how I can, how what you apply, I can learn from it. Ooh, so let me go back to point three here. It's critical. For my mouth, it had commanded. Everything that's written in God's word pertaining to the life of the man Jesus and God's plan of redemption was commanded through the mouth of Jesus. That's why Jesus, when he went to the garden of Gethsemane to pray, let this cup pass from me, he could, it, it couldn't happen. Because, check this out now. Please catch this and you can use this one. In Psalms 22, it talked about the crucifixion of Jesus as though it had already happened. Mm. In Psalms 22, it talked about the crucifixion of Jesus as though it had, it had already happened. That's the first division, the 22nd book in that doxology. In Psalms 22, the 22nd book and the first division, the doxology suggests that Jesus Christ had already been crucified before his birth. So then that's why when Jesus goes to the Garden of Gethsemane and he goes in depression, anxiety, but he comes out and God won't let him off the hook. He said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Why? Because the Bible we just saw in the text, it say the word can't fail. So if it was already written in the, and the psalmist written, wrote it or wrote a song about it in Psalms 52, then that man, when Jesus went to the cross, he had to do what was the father's will, die. I hope you're getting the true prophetic understanding. I hope you're learning this. I don't want to be popular. Don't want to be famous. I just want to tell the truth. Look what God said. For the things that were written in my word, they can't fail. Isaiah 53, 10. For it pleased the father to bruise him. There's another part of the prophetic letter. It was already written that Jesus would be bruised. So going to the cross, child of God, he's, he can't get away from it. Then what a prophet should be telling you through the unction of the Holy Ghost or the Spirit of God, that the things that God has given you, you can't get out of it, child of God. They should be confirming everything that God has spoken in your life, and you can't get away with it. If God said things are going to happen, child of God, you got to look for it to happen because God said it. And if God said it, it got to come to pass. Why? Because his word can't fail. Heaven and earth going to pass away, but his word will stand forever. His word can't fail. You can fail, but his word won't fail. I'm almost done. Let me go back to this. We're almost done. All right, let's look at the last part. He said, for my mouth can't, well, now watch this. Commandment came by Moses. He, the Mosaic law, he was known as the lawgiver. It came by Moses. But then we must understand now, after the commandment, Romans 7 chapter said, as long as a woman's husband liveth, she is bound to him. But if he be dead, she's free. So as long as the commandment that was given to Moses was here according to the law, you not, I mean, let, me, let me fix this. People say you and I know Israel, we're Gentiles. We didn't come in to Acts the 10th chapter. Why people have been teaching this inappropriately, I don't know, but I'll fix it today. Israel was bound to the law until Jesus came. Uh, 
They were bound to the things of the law until Jesus came because they were married through the commandment of the words that was given to Moses based on tablets. That's what the Bible says in Ezekiel 36, 33, Jeremiah, that I will no longer write it on stone, but I will place it in your heart. So now if you look at Isaiah 34, 16, the last part of say, and my spirit have gathered. That's why we got to go back to understand the first prophetic statement after Genesis 3, 15, the second prophetic voice. Uh, Genesis 49 and 10, the scepter shall not depart from Judah until Shiloh comes. No, a lawgiver, there we go, the commandment from between his feet. Watch this, until there be a gathering of the people. Well, the first gathering of the people was on the day of Pentecost. Uh, I'm not going to preach. <laughs> on the day of Pentecost, we see a gathering. So you know what, child of God? Please watch this video again. Please study this video to understand the truth. Don't get caught up in the hype. I heard Evangelist Jane, Missionary Jane Gray say something last week that was pivotal and that was understanding that we should all understand. Why study the word of God and you're not going to live according to it? The young man on the seed talk show said it yesterday. Why study the word of God and you're not going to live according to it? That's critical. Amen. So we thank you for joining us and tuning in today. Amen. Please share this video. Please like this video. Uh, you know what, I, I come to realize that because I'm not being controversy, controversial and I won't create things, a lot of people don't want to hear the truth. But it's for, for those who want to hear the truth, here's the truth. Get your Bible, go research it, go study it for yourself. Because God's word cannot lie. Neither is he the son of man that he must repent. Romans 5 and 8. God commended his love towards us. To while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. God bless you very much. We love you in Jesus' name. You are major and you are critical to his will for our life. And we thank God for you. God bless you.